The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Be good to have that kind of faith, wouldn't you? Could, if I just had that kind of faith. Uh, as you probably, some of you may know this, do you know that the Washington Redskins are playing a, a game this afternoon? Anybody know that? Uh, anybody gonna watch that game? Not a soul, right? Do you know why? For those of you who don't know? What? That's right. Well, not only that, but you know, you know what, the, uh, why, uh, what uh, they say in Las Vegas? What the odds of the Redskins winning it? They're supposed to lose by 47 points. I've never seen that. I mean, that's bad. <laughs> Worse than bad. I mean, talk about a group that's looking for a mustard seed or something. I mean, can you imagine what it's like to go to that clubhouse today, ready to face, no kidding, probably the best team in football, and they may be the worst. And they're going in with some kind of expectation. Uh, now, you have to realize, I don't know what the expectation are of the New England Patriots, but I think those brothers aren't worried too much, I'll tell you that. There's a kind of thing when life gets absolutely overwhelming that even a modicum of faith would be good. And frankly, the Redskins today, I don't think have a modicum. And I remember the old, remember the old quote by, um, this is sort of a football sermon. So ladies, if you don't know what he's talking about, I say forget it. But there was a guy named Vince Lombardi. Aren't we good, huh? All right, all right, okay. Vince Lombardi said that, uh, Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. And he said, if it's not everything, why do they keep score? Well, there's something about life, isn't there not? That, that somehow that we are captured by a world that says you gotta win, and if you don't win, it's not good. It's unfortunate, it's sad, it's depressing. You should be discouraged, you should win. And I, 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 I think about that, that seems to transfigure things. Uh, I don't know how the Washington Redskins go to the clubhouse today. Their chances of winning are more like the mustard seed. Maybe not even that much. We live in a world where competitiveness and win-lose seems to be the driving factor whether you're on the winning team or the losing team, and God forbid you're on the losing team because it's depressing, discouraging, and awful. Uh, politics, I forget, I'm not gonna get into who's winning, but it's like, it's like a blood sport. There's, you know, we got two teams out there. You're either for the Trump team or you're against the Trump team. We got a squad of people over here that are pro-Trump, but we got a squad of people over here who are anti-Trump. And we're betting like crazy on who's going to beat the other one. And then they're even getting into trash talking now. And the tragedy is, it's a game. It's a game. Tragedy is this afternoon at uh, wherever the game is being played. It's a game. But there seems to be a certitude that the coach of the uh, Redskins is going to be fired today if he loses. And the chances of that are. <laughs> and the people on the team are fighting with each other and blaming each other. And the same thing is going on in the politics and, and any number of other craziness in our world about this win, lose, and you got to win. It's the only, I think you get the drift. 
I mention this because what's going on with the disciples and they're begging for more faith? Jesus has been telling them we're on our way to Jerusalem. He's basically saying, he said, the last line he says to him, he says, uh, and if you screw up, it'd be better for you if a millstone was hanging around your neck. And just prior to that, he says, uh, well, forgiven seven times seven. And, you know, and, and I, they may not have been good at math, but even more than twice is pretty bad. And prior to that, you remember from last week, maybe the business of the rich guy that walks out of the house and he keeps passing the Lazarus by the door, even knows his name and passes it by every time. And all he wants is a little bit of food from the, just a little, a little scrap, nothing. And why is that bad? Because I've done that. I couldn't tell you the number of people I passed by in my journey through life and smiled or anyway and so the disciples on their way to Jerusalem say to Jesus increase our faith give us a kind of a sense of what it means to be forgive me for on your team Give me a sense of what it means to have the kind of courage that you do, the kind of faith that you do, the kind of willingness to go forward, the anticipation that you have. I can tell you a group of people is not anticipating much today. It's the Redskins, you know, for darn sure. And I'll tell you, the other team is anticipating, oh, I'm going to score big today. There's... Disciples say, increase our faith, help, help me have that kind of sense about life that I might be willing to have that kind of exuberance, that kind of excitement, that kind of expectation that you have, as opposed to the fear that weighs me down, as opposed to the discouragement that I seem to accept, as opposed to what I think may be coming and it doesn't sound good. Increase our faith. That's our life. And you know what Jesus says? He says, if you just had a modicum, just a little bit, can't even see it, as I understand it, can barely see it, you'd be able to do all sorts of stuff if you just had a little bit, which says an awful lot about how little ours is. If we just had a little, you could say to them all, And then he says something interesting about the slaves, which seems kind of repugnant, but you have to realize back in those days, there was no such thing of apartheid and we can overcome that or, or, or racial uh, animosity or uh, that we could vote. In those days, if you were a slave, you were a slave, period. There was no, no chance. That was it. That was your status in life. And if you were a slave, that's what you had a certain job to do. And what Jesus is saying in all these things, in this game of life, it's been won. Listen, it's been won. The game is already won. Act like winners. You've already, the game has been won. And they say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're on our way to Jerusalem. That doesn't look good. Yes, and it's been won. Who do you think standing next to you? It's been won. And even if we go to the cross, it will be won because God has his hand in all of this. All of this has been won. So take this seriously in your life. It's been won. There's not a person here who's not on the Patriots team. Not a one. Because the game has been decided and God has done the decision. Therefore, if you just had a glimmer, just a tiny, tiny glimmer of what that means for your life. Why, you could say anything and miracles would take place. Am I not right? If we just had a glimmer of what Jesus saw that our life will become, just had a glimmer of that. 
I think we could go to the stadium today and feel like winners, even if we're the Redskins. Really. And that's the point. And the same thing has to do with the business. What is our Christian life about? You know, it says, well, you know, uh, I don't know whether I want to forgive everybody. There are certain people I don't want to forgive. If you're a winner and you know that God's running the show and has already done, what's the point of holding it on? You're going to have to give it up sooner or later. And by the way, you might become best friends with the one you won't forgive. It might just happen. Pro knowing God's sense of humor, that's probably the way it's going to be. So he says, that's your job. That's all it is. And we have an opportunity, a pure joy of being co-redeeming with Jesus. We have that, we have the opportunity. We have the sheer opportunity of being able to say, I take your hand and we're going forth and we're going to play like winners today. Because we are winners. Now I know it's hard because... Uh, Lombardi says, yeah, but the final score is going to say, you're going to look at the score. I don't think so. And I don't think the Redskins at the end of today are going to say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm a winner. No, I don't think so. Because it's so powerful. But the best quote I ever heard, and I think a lot of you are familiar with it, by Grantland Rice. Jim, you remember this one? When the great scorer puts the mark next to your name, it won't be whether you won or lost. What's the answer? It's how you played the game, isn't it? And when you finally say it, is that not the point? Isn't it? Who frankly cares whether you won or lost? At the end of the day, I don't even think you care anymore. Do you, Jim, who won or lost? No. It's, it's how you played the game. And that's what this business of the, of the mustard seed is about. If you just had a little view of that, because God is running the show and we're part of that. And we get a chance to do something. We get a chance to join hands with that winning team. We get a chance to do it. And I look forward to maybe God says, uh, you didn't win many, Bob, but it really doesn't matter to me. But you played the game good. And that's the deal, isn't it, for all of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's proclaim our faith. It's on page 358. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.